Here we are again with another video. This time we will be talking about if conditions and control structures in Rust. If you haven't seen any of the other videos from my channel, then make sure to take a look at the playlist that I've created. You can find it in the description or in the info card. Uh, that's somewhere over there. Okay, without further ado, let's get going. And I'm starting off with running the Rustlings watch commands as usual. And this is going to run all of the existing exercises about variables and functions that we've done in the other videos. And here we see the compilation error of the next exercise. And we see here that this is the file if1.rs and the compiler is complaining that the function bigger that takes a and b expects a return type of i32, which is a number just like a and b, but it seems to be returning a unit type, which usually means that the function doesn't return anything because that's the default return value and functions in Rust. Well, let's open up the file and take a look. Okay, so here we have our function bigger, and as we can see, it takes a and b, and it says it returns an i32, and here's some instructions that say that we need to complete this function, and we need to return the bigger number. Okay, that makes sense. We should not use any other function call or any other variables. And of course, we can always ask for a hint if we want to. So let me remove that and see what we can do here. So we probably need to put an if condition here that checks whether A is bigger than B. And if that's the case, it's returning A. Otherwise, it's going to return B. I'm going to save this. We can see that it is compiling wonderful. Before we move on, just a quick look here. What's done really nicely is that there's a bunch of tests here that ensure that our code is working as expected. So this is the first time we're seeing this here. Um, there's also a nice comment that says that we shouldn't mind this code for now. Fair enough, but I just want to point this out. It's really nice that we have tests that ensure our code is working. Okay, I'm going to remove the I'm not done comment and move on to the next exercise. Okay, so in if2.rs, we can see that there's mismatch types. In line 13, it's expecting a reference stir, but it found an integer. Let's ask for a hint really quick. For that first compiler error, it's important in Rust that each conditional block returns the same type. To get the test passing, you will need a couple conditions checking different input values. Okay, well, so let's take a look at the file if2.rs. Okay, step one, make me compile. Here we have a function fizz if foo. It takes something that is a reference stir and should return something that is a reference stir. And there is an if condition that says if fizzish equals string fizz, then return foo, otherwise return one. Obviously, this is our problem here. We also have a test that makes sure that this is the case. Fizz if foo needs to return foo if we give it fizz. And if we give it something else, we can see that it needs to default to string bass. So let's just do that and save the file and see what happens. Okay, we have the next one and we see that there's three running tests here. Two of them are okay, but there is another one that's failing. Let's just go ahead and take a look at that. The test that's failing is bar for fuzz. So here we probably need to extend the function to return bar if the given value is the string fuzz. Let's make this work here. We check whether the given parameter is fuzz, then we will be returning bar, else we're going to return bass. Saving the file and let's see what happens. All right, so there's a little bug right there. Obviously, we can't just check if nothing is fuzz. So uh, let me fix that and put fizzish in here. Save the file and we see that's working. Wonderful. Okay, cool. So let's remove that comment here and move on. And that's it already with the exercises about if, if else and else if conditions in Rust. Thanks for watching.